this live coding session. Today we'll be sort of breaking from the previous previous series and looking at a community project called Code Buddies. There's an initiative to rewrite or create a proof of concept for Code Buddies version three. Uh, we want to use Django, so I've gone ahead and I forked the um, repository, and today we're going to look at uh, this initial and proof of concept goal is to create a resource data store with these CRUD operations, which I'm assuming mean REST endpoints, and this schema. I'll just have to guess on the data types. It's going to start a resource bookmarking archiving service. Okay, I kind of understand a little bit better now. So resources could be like tutorials or videos and things like that. The type will be an enum. Uh, so basically, I'm checking out the settings here on the left. I've done a little bit off stream uh, to get an initial environment set up, which should be, let me double check. There we go. So we're pip env. Um, need to create a branch. Resources. Well, they've already scaffolded the app. What are we going to do today? Here. Yeah, master. All right, so we're on a branch. I've got a couple of changes here. I just wanted to check in my VS Code settings. Get ignore. Huh. It seems to be right there. Already. So I don't see why this is being picked up. Is that's supposed to ignore all the uh, all the files there, and but it actually needs to ignore the VS Code VS Code folder as well. Got it. All right, yeah. So let's commit that. All right, and then uh, let's take a look at this pip file. Make sure it's got. Everything we're expecting here. Uh, the project by default is just using pip um, in their in the README, but I've been getting pretty good uh, mileage lately at my day job using pip in with uh, with my colleagues there. So I'm gonna kind of stick with that. For example, it has um, one thing I really like is the constraint solver. It'll help you update all your packages to the latest compatible versions. This looks kind of interesting, but in any case, oh, okay, because it's a string. Uh, so yeah, let's just go ahead and create an initial pip file. And um, it's you know using pip, so it's compatible. I just hope they don't get out of sync. All right, cool. So we've got the initial couple commits. We've got the fork created. Uh, so I just realized my attribution is wrong here. <laughs> I've been working on the Western Friend app 
for a while now, so it's pointing to the wrong GitHub address there. Uh, this is the current project we're working on. I'll be doing some streaming on Western Friend uh, this weekend, maybe tonight. I'm not sure exactly how long this will take, uh, where we'll be looking at uh, payment processing. So here's the Code Buddies GitHub organization and the Django concept repository. So I'm just going to hop back over to mine, my fork. So it looks like the repository structure, I'm just getting used to this. Uh, some common stuff that comes from cookie cutter Django. Uh, we've got a license. So looks like we're at GNU General Public License. We should probably uh, license it with Afro General Public License since they're already going with strong copy left. Um, Afro General Public License is uh, useful for software that's designed to run in the cloud, so to speak, on a server. Uh, GPL v3 might uh, do the trick as well, closing the uh, kind of cloud loophole, the AS, active server pages loophole, ASP loophole, where you could kind of run software and it wasn't considered distributing it, so it circumvented the um, share alike clause of the general public license. Okay, so it looks like um, this is the actual project folder and we've got some other things like documentation, restructured text, text. Uh, we've got some settings, configuration, uh, for the actual Django project. Okay, so that's there. Probably localization is gonna go here and multiple requirements and some utilities. Interesting. Okay, this is cool. So it looks like I might need some image processing. I'm not sure how far they've gotten along in this project. Just checking it out, my friend uh, Sebastian recommended it during the last live stream. So yeah, I guess the first thing to do is just run the file. So we're in our virtual environment. And we're running Python 3.7.3. Uh, so I'll need to, before I can run the file uh, project, I'll need to migrate. And the problem being, I created a database, but I haven't configured it with the user settings. This is something I'll have to set up here real quick. Um, so back here under config, getting used to this layout, this repository layout. Looks like they're wanting celery to be run. Hmm. This will be a little bit of a slow part. And out of the box, we've got a bunch of complicated requirements. So I'm not sure that this is the best thing. Why we need celery right away, uh, or why Vine is not in the requirements text?
think you need a username and <laughs> to connect to this database, right? Database URL. So this database URL would include it, I reckon. So let's see, I can figure this out. But the Vine thing is so, I'm not sure what's going on there. Vine 5. Thing happened. And that's there. Dependencies were installed. This looks like a, a legitimate issue, but it's closed. issue not going into these recursive dependencies That's it. For some reason, that vine was not getting picked up. Been less than five. This strange seems strange. I think 
this is a bug report. Suggestion. All right, so there's lots, lots of ideas here. I haven't read through this document. Uh, what this is, I haven't introduced it on stream, uh, but I think I clicked it from the README. Uh, so we're going to rebuild it from scratch, the version three. And unfortunately, yeah, this is. I, I fully agree that Meteor JS was. It's kind of abandonware now. Almost. I mean. It's, not fully fair and um, to say that, but I think the large part of the community has moved on. Some of the main evangelists and core contributors have moved on. Uh, it's also really tightly tied to MongoDB, and I think Mongo uh, is one built on a uh, premise, this NoSQL movement that has kind of faded in, in strength and relational databases like Postgres have uh, have stayed very relevant and it even made some of the improvements that the NoSQL uh, movement was kind of raised. Uh, some of the uh, sort of limitations in the NoSQL movement is based on have been improved in the relational database. But secondly, Mongo is like kind of doing funny licensing stuff. So all that uh, to say, I think I agree, Meteor.js is outdated and I'm working on another project, a Meteor.js project for several years now, we're really strongly uh, considering porting it over to Django as well. And this will be interesting to decouple the front end and back end. And I believe uh, the primary aim right now is looking at React, but there uh, is also an opportunity to see if Vue might be a good fit, Vue.js. So uh, compare those side by side. And it doesn't have to necessarily be only one front end. This will be cool. Uh, people can design their own clients and, and to some degree. All right, so I will read through this document, but it is linked here in the main project readme if you're interested in checking it out also. All right, so here's the deal. It's trying to connect as me. doesn't have a database so it needs a, um, a connection string a database connection string so let's go ahead and set that up and there's an environment variable for that I just had had that open I don't want to run up all, all these updates just yet uh, for some reason they've pinned accelerate Four, but I think for the most part, this early in the project especially, we should be able to start fresh with the latest um, compatible dependencies. Pipin will help us solve that. I think unfortunately, the Django uh, cookie cutter Django has some some older versions of the dependencies. Let's go ahead and go back to this config directory, the base config, and it's looking for this database URL. Uh, DSN. So I will just refer to some general 
documentation. Or actually, I think the um, We're not using PsychoPG, but I think the docs have a pretty good example. I think it is, well. Something like this postgres colon slash slash, right? You know, it'd be like local user at host name, user password at host name. example Check, I got this. I think you just do the verb and variable name. Equals the value, but does it stick around? I need it to stick around. So I think you have to export it. Existing, so I think it's just like. Well, what does it want? So there's the string, and it wants. Just gonna just put that in my. dummy database uh, URL that works so we just need this and it's code buddies code buddies all right I'm gonna add this to the readme adopted so what do we do to view this control shift V so let's open our restructured text I'll add a little bit of uh, documentation as we go oh, come on. control shift V previews it basic commands
Hmm. All right. Oh, this comes out of cookie cutter. So actually, the uh, readme is a one director higher. Any okay? Anyway, let's go ahead and just continue. Continue a. Password authentication failed for uh, user. All right, so let me make sure I've got my password right. It should be code buddies, code buddies. the port w prompt for password should happen automatically all right, all right. it should be code buddies E O D E B U D D I E S. Pure authentication failed. That's, that's boggling my mind because the password is correct. Ah, okay. So it's got to be configured properly.
is changing the string to use my IP address. It's a local host. Local code buddies. Oh, that's another problem. Put the password wrong. Be careful about that. Easy mistake, but yeah, just be more careful. Good. All right, get those migrations wrong. And on that note, I'll have just a little bit of tea. Got it. We're in like Flynn. So I've got the Django Rest Framework docs up here a little bit. Pip file. And install Vine.
something about admin users here, managers, admins, admins. Well, I'm a super user, I should be able to access it. Let me just see. All right, I got a prototype up and running. Django debug toolbar, and bootstrap template. And let's see if I can access the admin section. Looking good. All right, so what do we have here? Wow, this is nice. So we have the accounts, groups, celery related stuff, multi-site, social login, and users. There's me. This debug toolbar is so nice. Cool beans. Now, after only 40 minutes, we're ready to dig in to the code. What did I change about the config? Hmm. Strange that it's yellow. So we're gonna go to the models and create a models here. Before I do that, I would just like to make a little bit more green tea. I've got a small teapot, it empties quickly. I will be right back, it takes about one minute to uh, steep, so it's not too long.
should kind of re re reflect it. Tutorial. For example, course, online courses, and we'll go with that. Now we are using black in the project, so let's stick with that. I'm not too strongly opinionated on formatting, I just think we should follow PEP8. And black is kind of emerging as just a go-to, so you can kind of get beyond just talking about lint rules. Uh, in the meantime, credit. Uh, gotta be careful about that. In this case, I think it was okay, but... Uh, built-in methods so we should leave that just be careful about that even though we are going to have it as a a member of this class credit should be doing is defining uh, help text for some of these to make it a little bit less ambiguous. What's this about? Okay. So black is doing his work. Oh, I think black automatically formatted that for me, but let's take a look. Yeah, it's going to do that. I'm not going to fight it. Uh, so as code buddies, must have closed the terminal or something. At localhost slash. This is giving me an error because I think this is not added to the apps. This resources apps. So we need to clear that actually. It's already, I'm already there. Installed apps. Where are we defining those installed apps?
Should be in the base settings. I don't understand this. Big long list. Django apps, third party apps. Okay. Ah, and then they're combining them. Local ask. Local apps. Got it. I've not seen that convention, but I can respect that. Uh, and then we just created resources. This should be resources, resources config, I think. Resources config. All right, okay, Terminals open. I, I hit a button by accident, but in any case, I hit a keyboard shortcut that opened a second to, uh, terminal. for it. Register the model. I gotta look this up. I haven't been working with this part. So yeah. String. Oh, darn. I thought it was going to give me the. Nice. There we go. Turns on title. Now we go back. There we are. 
So this string method changed the default display. All right, so this is a good start. Uh, what else was I going to do? Oh, well, let's just add another resource type. I'm going to put it on a new line because it's a little easier to track visually. And I think by adding this third one, it'll be like black will accept the fact that this is just too long for one line because there are community resources as well. Now if I added this resource and I can say, or for example, go back, save and add another. speaker just kidding sort of code buddies good stuff all right commit those push pull request and get some feedback looking pretty good Great. Okay, so it's one hour on the dot. Uh, I think it's a good time to take a small break. It was more or less what I set out to do. The first half was to create this resource element. I'll see if I'm up for some more coding. I might work on Western Friend in a little while, where we will be looking at payment processing. Thanks for everyone who's joined me on Twitch TV today. Uh, chat was reactive, but that's cool. It's nice to have uh, people at least lurking in the video in the live stream and uh, if you're watching this video on YouTube feel free to leave me a question or comment and I will respond to those promptly uh, again this project is open source github.com slash code buddies the Django concept I'm going to be opening a pull request over there I have a, my own fork but this is the main source if you're interested in Python Django development I've been doing a live series on these codebuddies.org also has some study groups I should just show that because it's great community anyway. I was doing some live streams on that site for a while and I'll maybe be circling back around to it, but it is peer-to-peer -peer organized study groups via Hangouts and we're rewriting this site from scratch. Okay, well thanks again for watching and have a great day.